Hello, Christian here with another video update for the PFSense WireGuard package. Wanted to show off some new features um, that we've been working on and um, some changes, and also give you an update on the kernel module development by Jason uh, Dunnenfield. Um, so let's go back into the VPN WireGuard page, and the first thing you'll see now is we're now showing all addresses and allowed IPs in their respective uh, locations. So in order to keep the table layout clean, we're only showing the first address. But if there's more addresses, you'll see a little plus next to that address indicating the number of additional addresses or allowed IPs. And if you hover over that, you'll see the rest of those. So in this case, there's actually three addresses bound to the TUN WG0 interface. Um, and if I actually click on that, it'll take me right to the tunnel and I can go and uh, and add addresses or remove addresses. Um, again, on the peers under allowed IPs, we're using that same logic and we're showing the first allowed IP in the list and then any additionals we're showing um, in the uh, pop-up window. And then we also have that under the peers tab. Again, same idea. Um, you can click on that and it'll take you to the peer where you can add or remove allowed IPs. And then the last thing is the new status page. Um, I've been working with uh, two guys, uh, Manoj and Ben, in Discord. Um, they're also on GitHub, and they've been with me since the very beginning, and they've been very helpful and instrumental in um, not only um, providing real-time feedback um, to the project, but also um, even uh, helping out with, with code. Um, so I really appreciate those guys. Um, they've been doing a lot, and the, the project would not be where it is today without them. Um, but this is the new status page. Uh, this was designed by Minoj, and we worked on it um, over the last few days. And again, we're using the drop, the pop-up, pop-over, I guess, for the allowed IPs. And then we also have this new um, status icon for the handshake. Um, so you can see that um, it's currently green because both of these peers, my laptop and my cell phone, have had a handshake within the last five minutes. Um, but if I, well, I'm not going to sit here for five minutes, but if, uh, if, uh, my cell phone, for example, were to go off, um, after five minutes, the uh, icon would turn yellow and eventually it would turn red, um, indicating that, uh, it hasn't handshake in a, in a while. Um, so that is the new status page. Uh, we're really excited about it. Um, it looks really, really good, um, and provides some, uh, really valuable feedback and is a lot better than just showing you the raw output of WG show. Um, so that's really, really neat. Um, and then finally, the other thing that I wanted to mention was there is an update to the kernel module code that was actually released yesterday by Jason. Um, the, um, the April 28th snapshot includes some very important uh, fixes for some kernel panics that were caused by interfaces being torn down if they had IPv6 addresses. I'm not a kernel developer, so I'm not really sure exactly what the issue was on the kernel code side. Um, but I do know that any of you who are trying to use IPv6 are probably experiencing some very weird behavior um, because every time the uh, the package would invoke WireGuard uh, WG Quick to actually tear down the interface, if there was an IPv6 address bound to it, it would actually cause the box to, to kernel panic and reboot. Um, so. If, if you sat there on the interface and waited a hot minute thinking that it was just frozen, uh, no, it was very likely that if you were to go to the console, um, look, at, look at the screen output of your, of your box, you'd, it was probably kernel panicking um, and rebooting. But that has been fixed. So there is a new update to the kernel module. Um, again, the latest is now April 28th build. And the kernel uh, WireGuard tools remains at April 24th. Um, so if you're using IPv6, you definitely want to upgrade the kernel module code at this point. Um, really, you should update the kernel module code anyway. Um, one thing that is important to note is that when you upgrade the kernel module, um, currently, um, you know, the kernel module is loaded in memory. So if you actually replace the, the binary on disk, it's actually not going to load the new code. Um, so you'll have to reboot. Um, Currently, we're still kind of working out the, the you know, the process of, of doing that once the package is actually released officially. Um, but right now, 
it's probably better to just uh, to reboot um, to, to make sure that the new kernel module code is loaded and that you're actually using the latest code. Um, I, I, I don't think that just going off of the fact that, you know, the, the, the WireGuard KMod package, just because of the version bumps, you know, from the perspective of the package manager, I don't think that actually necessarily guarantees that you are actually running the latest, um, the latest kernel module. Um, so anyway, just reboot for now until we, we get a better idea on how that actually works. Um, I do know that if you do a KLD unload and then KLD load uh, at the command line, you can actually kick it to uh, reload the, the module. But anyway, just for now, make sure you reboot. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the, the big changes. Um, again, we now are showing addresses in a nice clean way and we have a new status page. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.